How have you been? Oh, I've been great. I feel like I've been going through some kind of a, a portal or initiation. Let me just tell you something. I am so deeply grateful for this opportunity. It really means a lot to me. And I just want to tell you that right off the bat, that I really appreciate you doing this interview. You're most welcome. It's an honor for me as well. I want to begin by introducing you as my esteemed guest, Michelle Marie Engel, who has dedicated many years to the study and practice of spiritual teachings. You've guided countless individuals on their path to enlightenment, and you're widely recognized for your wisdom in this field. I know we're going to explore the soul's journey to higher consciousness. I'd also like to delve into the emotional aspects of this profound experience, because as I understand it, it's not just a theoretical concept. It's a journey filled with moments of transformation and deep emotional connection. Can you share a powerful story of someone you've guided on their soul's journey to higher consciousness, highlighting the emotional impact it had on their life? What comes to mind right away is this was a soul testing. And as souls, we go through these rites of passages, if you will. We meet up with our greatest fears. One of my soul tests and one of my greatest fears was abandonment. I found myself in a strange city feeling abandoned and feeling like I'm a naked soul and I've got to get past myself and do something to help others. So forget the fact that I'm virtually homeless and penniless and let's see who can I help. So I put an ad on Craigslist to do free readings and I ended up doing a free reading to two different people. One of them came into my field synchronistically in a different way. And I gave her a reading. And what I saw was just magnificent talents. I saw her on stage. I saw her singing like she had this beautiful voice, this great potential as a singer. So I conveyed to her what I saw and her potential. I didn't know the impact I was having, but I was there to be of service to get past myself and just serve somebody else. And later I found out that she was suicidal. After she got this reading, she wasn't suicidal anymore. She just had this new outlook on life. She was lit up and wanted to move forward, which she did. That's a beautiful story. When we support somebody, if it's a genuine support, you release oxytocin, which seeps into their sinews and it helps uplift them, helps uplift their brain chemistry, which then in turn helps uplift their physiology. To provide the audience with a comprehensive understanding of the soul's journey to higher consciousness, I'd like to delve into the logical and philosophical aspects of this topic, because um, I think it's essential to explore the intellectual underpinnings that support the idea of a divine plan in the pursuit of higher consciousness. So from a philosophical perspective, how do you explain the concept of the soul's blueprint and its role in our journey towards higher consciousness? What are the logical reasons for any individual to embark on this path? The soul is like a seed that is packed with individual unique potential. So to discover your own soul seed, if you're the seed and you're going to become an oak tree and your individual unique soul with unique gifts, a unique potential and expression to discover that is to know thyself, find thyself. So the whole journey as an overview, you basically start out thinking of yourself as a, a physical being. Then you get past the physical being and physical senses and get into the soul perceptions and the soul senses of self. When you realize your true essence, which is a process, it really goes grace by grace. It's not necessarily like an instant flash, but there are flashes actually of propulsion that moves the soul forward. But usually it's grace by grace. So 
when one starts perceive their soul seed essence and potential, these gifts want to come up into the consciousness and be expressed. She was here to express her gifts. But when I said it to her, she completely resonated with it. So the same with me, when I discovered that I wanted to express through writing, I would go into have deep perceptions and I'd want to put it down on paper. I never did it with the intention of writing books or anything like that. It was just a matter of self-expression. And a lot of people start hobbies that way. They just want to express themselves creatively and get their feelings, which is the language of the soul. And the, the journey of the heart is the journey of the soul. Going into the heart and soul intelligence is how we discover our soul essence and to express from that deeper level where we can apprehend and comprehend the light of our own soul and then express it. You mentioned hobby because uh, I know for me, I'm an amateur photographer. I like capturing the lines, the textures, the light. It becomes a, a spiritual experience for me because I'm alone in nature. There's just me and God, if you like. There's this marriage that happens. I look at the landscape. I look at the textures. I look at the leading lines. And I look at the light. I look at the shapes. And then the composition comes to me and I frame it and I capture it on my lens. It's a really strange thing because... People look at the photographs and they say, oh, that's a really good camera. You must have such a great camera. I say it's got nothing to do with the camera. That's just a tool. It's got to do with how you see things, how you start to almost channel the composition in a way by bringing all these parts together in your own mind. It becomes, for me, a, a spiritual experience. When I go out to a place and I'm in nature, it is my happy place. So I think spirituality can take on different forms. And many spiritual traditions believe in the existence of a divine plan or a, a higher purpose that guides our life path. This plan is said to be intricately connected to our soul's blueprint, a unique and pre-existing plan for our spiritual evolution. Can you elaborate on the idea of the divine plan and the soul's blueprint? And how do these concepts interplay in an individual's quest for higher consciousness? Interestingly, I could take the picture in my mind that I got of you being in nature and the essence of nature is the essence of of the soul, I can just see you resonating with the pure essence of nature, which activates your soul to realize your own true soul essence. You have this creative ability that's inspired by recognizing and resonating with the pure essence of spirit in nature, in the soul, all ubiquitous, and I completely resonate with that. So the activation comes from the resonation of the pure essence. I resonate with that because I also take pictures of flowers and feel that essence of nature. You feel the beauty. It keeps going back to the heart and soul. You feel and sense that beauty and you resonate with that. That's like self-reflection at its finest, the true self the image becomes a gateway to the essence because it's almost like I walk into the image and let that image envelop me and I become one with it and it becomes one with me because yeah. at the outset, before the framing and the composition, I'm already embodying and embracing it so that I can enact and extend it. Other people look at it and they can see almost like the impression of my soul journey in a way. And I find that really fascinating. Yeah, that's like being 
mesmerized by spirit because you're actually in and realize your oneness of being universal spirit and universal consciousness. That direct connection to spirit, because at the heart of the soul's journey to higher consciousness lies the concept of a direct connection to spirit or the divine. And that serves as a guiding light for me that offers me wisdom and guidance as I'm seeking it through the lens. My question is, can you explain how an individual can establish and nurture a direct connection to spirit in their daily lives? Are there any practices or experiences that can facilitate this connection? Absolutely. It's communion. Whether you're communing in nature with the essence of nature or whether you're sitting in meditation, it's all about communion, letting go of the walls of the mind and the ego mind, letting all that dissolve when you're in the essence of nature or when you're communing with God. That's that direct connection. There are many ways to establish direct connection. Be an innocent, humble soul speaking to God through my heart and communing with God and speaking about, I wonder about this. I'm curious. I I need to know this. I love you, God, please. And then you realize God is imminent and God is within and God is responsive and God answers with all of life. That's when those synchronicities occur. You're communing with the ubiquitous intelligence of spirit and you're in tune, whether it's nature or whether it's meditation, however you get to that place of consciousness, you feel it and you know it. It is the realm, really, of the absolute eternal essence. Beautiful. I love that communion because I feel when I'm out in nature and I feel that I'm being guided, if you will. The more I let go of trying to frame the image, the more I let go of that and just let it seep into me, it just starts to come together together. I feel I am communing with nature, communing with the land, communing with the essence of the land, communing with the the whole radiation of the land. It seems to me that my trajectory is more about frequency than chemistry. So it's less gravitational for me and much more radiational. Yes, I, I want to make a comment about that because... When the drop of the individual soul or the sense of separate self disappears, then you're in the ocean of consciousness. So Mm. we have the ability to be individual and also be the whole of consciousness. If you are in the whole ocean of consciousness, let's call that the mothership of consciousness, You can be in the mothership and be attuned and you have the infinite intelligence of the all that is access to that divine mind. You can also take your individual soul and individual self and explore consciousness that way. So there's both personal and universal. We can expand or contract We have that ability of awareness to have a perspective based on an individual location or place in, you know, quote time, or we can go to the mothership or the ocean and be one with all that is where all intelligence prevails and we are attuned to that and we can ask anything, we can know anything, and we actually get to that place of knowing and unification. It's like amalgamation. I love that imagery. I feel guided to guide because one of the intriguing aspects uh, of this journey is when you embark on it, I often find myself in the role of being a guide for others and becoming plasmogenic beacon of light, helping others to navigate their own paths to higher consciousness. For people listening to this, 
how can individuals who are on the path to higher consciousness find themselves in the role of guides and what qualities or experiences prepare them to guide others effectively? It's actually a natural process because when you're tuned in to all that is, you become like an instrument and you're attuned to the highest level vibrational frequency. So you can be used as an instrument for this higher intelligence to come through. Usually when we're at that place anyway, we have that broader sense of self has a sense of love, compassion, and propensity to be of service. It's such a strong and powerful love. It comes from love to want to be of service. And that intention of being of service, being attuned, and being an instrument of the divine comes into play. And those words of wisdom come through because you're attuned to that vibrational frequency. You're really aware of the no veils of separation between dimensions and our guides and angels are loud and clear. You get used to that interaction, that interdimensional interaction. You ask, you receive, sometimes it's spontaneous and it's just that level of consciousness. Again, it's that ubiquitous intelligence. And when you're tuned into that, then you're an instrument of the divine and you're somebody's angel in the moment, mm. spontaneously. That's the thing too, the soul's journey. The soul, when it ascends from, let's say a human is in the middle of an animal might be below and an angel might be above in a vibrational frequency. And the human in between going through a process of ascension goes up to the angelic realm where they're just working for God and being of service and that angelic, pure of heart, pure, clear mind, pure heart, instrument of God, knowing God as the doer and singing praises to God nonstop within really because to God, the glory. So it happens really naturally. And a lot of us have these little flashes and we are of service. Sometimes we realize it afterwards because we get some intrinsic value and our conscience says, that was a very kind and good thing that you did. That has a ripple effect and it goes across humanity and across souls more than you really consciously know at the time you're doing it. My father used to say to me, it's not always happening where the applause is. In other words, so you can do something, but you may not see the results of what you do, or you don't do it because you want the applause. It's not about that. It's about the very fact that you want to be of service to someone because you're in love with service. It's part and parcel of being human. I feel it's a universal subpoena because I feel that I'm on universal camera. In my meditation practice, I get peaceful presence because I feel that when you have peaceful chemistry, which I experience during meditation, I get peace of mind. That state of inner tranquility, I associate with that whole journey to higher consciousness because it means I'm fully present in the moment. I'm free from the distractions of the ego and the external world. The question I'd like to ask you is, what practices or teachings in your wisdom can help individuals cultivate a peaceful presence in their lives? And how does that state contribute to their spiritual growth? Being dedicated and devoted to cultivating that peaceful presence is the first thing. Just having that yeah. impetus, setting the intention making it happen, doing that inner work, so to speak, which isn't really work, but it's a place when you create that peaceful presence, that still reflective lake and embody that peaceful presence. You are discovering your true essence. You're also discovering your gifts and your blueprint and how it fits into the divine plan. You take that tranquility and you establish that as a baseline state of consciousness. And then you realize 
that inner tranquility comes and creates our peaceful paradise. So the heaven within becomes the heaven on earth, which is what we are individually and collectively creating as we do that. So even just going within and establishing that peaceful presence, it's such a gift to the world because inner peace really extrapolates and we create peace in the world that way. You actually become, I call it like a tuning fork for God. Mm -hmm. And you have that high vibrational frequency, which comes from that tranquility and that peaceful presence that you establish as a baseline state of consciousness into all the time. And then maintaining that in the world, which can be challenging, but we keep going back to it. So that's foundational. Absolutely. During practice, it's like my consciousness, it's like a hand reaching up. Mm -hmm. And as it reaches up, the other hand reaches down. The universal hand reaches down. And then you get that compatibility of alignment because they're tuned to each other. Many people wait rather than reaching up because they're waiting for the hand to come down. I found it quite the opposite. Practice for me is about reaching up. Absolutely. It's almost like the umbilical cord, realizing that connection and seeking and drawing that into yourself and you're lifting up. And incidentally, you just made me think of this, the inner teachers show up, the other dimensional beings show up and they will come in and start guiding you from within I've had two extremely profound experiences. One, Archangel Michael became my inner teacher. And I call this particular lesson in the moment guidance. It had to do with an educational setting and sticking up for a soul who was being oppressed. The soul happened to be a youthful child, a teenager, and the oppressors happened to be in a residential home for girls. I was the teacher that came in. Those were the outer roles. Then Archangel Michael was showing me in the moment guidance. An incident happened, a circumstance presented itself. I became this girl's advocate. And I went through a bunch of different experiences. I ended up speaking to the regional manager of this organization. And I remember this was the culmination of this exercise. And I asked within, should I reveal this information? And I heard full disclosure. So I had the in the moment guidance and I revealed the information that I was inquiring about whether I should say it or not in that moment. So that direct connection to these guides, they're becoming our inner teachers. One was with Archangel Michael. And the other one was with Mother Mary. And the culmination of the one with Mother Mary, I was learning about a soul's development. I learned something called the Mother Mirror, which had to do with self-esteem, self-worth, how people see themselves, and how important the mother is in their life, in developing their sense of self. During this process, I was guided to understand and embody unconditional love. If you met somebody who was a criminal, and instead of judging them from a human perspective, you went into your soul perception, prayed for understanding, and you wanted to understand what makes a person think, or how they think, or how they behave. It's more of an analysis of the psychology and the soul that I was being taught. And at the same time, to embody unconditional love through this understanding and compassion of watching a soul develop. At the end of that experience, I was guided to do a soul healing, which I'd never heard of before, but I was guided from within. I took a lawn chair, sat by a creek allowed the energy of my soul to take over. Interestingly, I was basically shown that I passed a test and in the outer world, 
unbeknownst to me, behind some bushes near the creek, there was a senior home and they had an activity and bagpipes started playing Amazing Grace. It was quite surreal. The inner teachers come straight to your soul, through your heart, and guide you further to then also be a guide. One of the group activities that I do is about manifesting, and I was given a process. And during that process, one of the pieces is to create an emotional evoking experience. Always in the moment, I ask my guides, what is the emotional experience for this group at this time? So it's uniquely provided at that time for that particular group. That's part of the manifesting process. You're talking about the many tributaries that flow from the heart, which isn't to do with an academic pursuit or an academic perusal. It's more about the visceral feeling and being able to beacon out from you. That's part of the tuning fork principle, because then things will act in resonance or in sympathy with that frequency, with that resonance. Absolutely. During the soul's journey, first we think of ourselves as physical. Then we think of ourselves as our mind or ego mind and who we think we are. Then we go into the magnetic version of ourselves in our heart and we perceive from that space a heart intelligence which is magnetic and connected to these other dimensions and the higher we raise our frequency we come from electric to magnetic to photonic is what i perceive mm. and the photonic intelligence there's no time or space you transcend time and space you're just in that zero point and you're connected with your guides and angels and so forth. It's through the heart. That's the heart is like the portal to keep raising our vibrational frequency and expanding and dissolving everything so that you're one with all that is and the infinite intelligence of the divine mind. Oh, absolutely. I think mean, being a commitment to lifelong learning is not just learning it, but the alignment to that learning, aligning your faculties, aligning your physiology. Mm -hmm. So you're not just using the brain as data storage so that you can vomit out some content, but from the standpoint that it becomes not a belief, but an inner knowing that, that is indelibly etched into your neurons into your dna because when you learn something you get new wiring if you do it consistently enough mm -hmm. and then that's hard to undo that's why people mm -hmm. tend to say you can't unthink what you just thought you can't unsee what you just saw one of the things that um is in terms of nourishment choices because we make choices about our nourishment in terms of food, air, water, and environment, and so on. I was thinking this morning about soul sustenance and its source of nourishment. In meditation this morning, I was thinking, I want to sustain the soul on its journey. That, for me, requires a deep understanding of its source of nourishment. The nourishment goes beyond the physical sustenance, relates more to the spiritual nourishment that, I feel is needed to thrive. The questions that came up, what are the sources of soul sustenance? How can I access and integrate them into my life? And how does this sustenance support the soul's journey to higher consciousness? There's a lot to unpack with what you just said. Right. A lot has come to my mind about that. I want to talk about two different things. One is the programming. When you're thinking about the wiring and the programming of the mind, so what you put your attention on and what you learn, the mind is a very powerful tool. When you direct your attention, you are deciding how you're going to program your mind. And beyond programming the mind is getting the soul sustenance from the infinite intelligence of the universe. As the soul completes its journey, it starts out feeding the mind and basically programming based on 
what comes to your attention or what you choose to put your attention on. So you're programming your mind. If you want to raise your vibration and go into your heart and start getting the soul sustenance from the direct connection training wheels in terms of reprogramming, deprogramming and reprogramming would be to pay attention to and consciously reprogram with information that is the highest vibrational frequency, such as scriptures and spiritual writings that inspire you and make you think and reflect about deeper perceptions. They inspire your soul. They turn on your soul intelligence. The soul can apprehend and comprehend the light of information, which is actually in everything. Everything is energy. And all mm -hmm. energy carries information. All information is light. Well, with the deepest perceptions of the soul, you can comprehend the light or get the information out of any energy. If you're in meditation and you are contemplating and reflecting a question, your life, something that's on your heart, something that's in your mind, your soul perception kicks in the infinite intelligence, then you become that light and intelligence and the comprehension of the soul brings light to the information or energy that you're reflecting upon. So that reflection stimulates the soul when you're in that infinite intelligence and whatever information that you need can come to you in all the clear perceptions of the soul, clear sentience, clear audience, all the clairs, clear seeing, clear knowing. You're everywhere present. You can go anywhere with your soul perception. There's no mm. time or space. But you have access to all information, the infinite intelligence of the one divine mind, which is actually fascinating. It is the sustenance because everything is light and information. And that's who we are essentially, that essence of eternal light. Thank you for expanding that because that's led to more questions, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll definitely reflect on that. Can you provide the audience with some key takeaways or principles for embarking on their soul's journey to higher consciousness? Absolutely. Everybody's journey is unique. There is no one way for everybody. I would say, first of all, honor your own free will choice. Follow your own heart. Be that sovereign soul that chooses your own journey and protects and loves yourself exactly where you're at and who you are. Nobody can really tell you what to do or who to be, because you are uniquely you, and every journey is unique and different. If you just follow your heart and be authentic, real, curious, and follow that inner light, which holds your own soul's unique seed potential, be authentically, honestly, who you are, and express freely, because everybody is in a state of perfection in every moment. It's always perfect. How do you envision the future of spirituality and the collective journey towards higher consciousness? I see groups of resonant souls, including you and I, that have the intention of raising consciousness for humanity. We start with us. It always starts at home, right here in our own heart. Mm. That's where we start. We join morphogenic fields through shared intention. So we are working and expressing ourselves and using our life energy to be of service to raise consciousness. Each one of us, as we discover our unique gifts and express them, again, it's organic, it's natural. We can see the energy. We can see people coming together. I see these souls 
coming together almost let's say there's like a ring of orbs mm. and these orbs are these souls and they're coming together and they're called according to their unique purpose the visions that come from our blueprints that brings us together to work on shared intentions and it all fits together with the universal vision of the divine plan. It's orchestrated from within. And we're often working with many souls who we don't even really know in the physical realm. But we're working together on the spiritual realm. There is a huge group. There's a huge contingency of these higher level souls working interdimensionally, lifting up the souls of humanity and the collective, it keeps accelerating and I'm getting goosebumps again, but it's happening right now. I'm so optimistic and I'm so happy. It's a miracle of love and peace that is coming to expression through the Christed souls, which we are becoming as we raise our inner light and express through our heart the intelligence of the greater soul or spirit we are united as one and we are exponentially powerful and people are being gifted individually and collectively by all these souls more and more joining and being activated by the way souls get activated at the perfect divine timing so i just see a miraculous change in humanity and even how the inner tranquility becomes the beauty and the peace of our world that's a powerful and potent vision and that's so beautifully said for listeners called by our discussion today where can they find more information resources or guidance on the soul's journey to higher consciousness I have three websites and a YouTube channel and a Rumble channel. My main website is smile4love.com. That's my main website. I have michellemarieangel.com and also visionary solutions number 4 smile.org. I have books, audiobooks, decrees, a wealth of free information on my website, as well as links to my books. And michellemarieangel.com talks about life purpose, the readings I do, and the guidance that I give. Solutions for smile.org has to do with classes that I provide. And I am constantly working on my work, which a lot is still in development but I have much developed and this is the year that I am being activated to go public. So I'm doing it little by little. And again, I want to thank you for this opportunity because this is part of me getting out to the world and sharing what I have to give. I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you, Michelle, for sharing your profound knowledge, your experiences with us today. For me, your wisdom has illuminated our path towards higher consciousness. And I want to thank you for your dedication, your commitment to guiding others on this transformative journey. For listeners, I hope this conversation has, has sparked a flame within your heart. You feel inspired to embark on your own soul's journey to higher consciousness. And as Michelle was saying, this path is unique to each of you and is filled with a infinite potential for growth, love, and awakening. Thank you for joining us today, and may your journey be filled with love, light, and limitless possibilities. Until next time, stay curious, stay open, and keep exploring the boundless realms of your soul.